Right. So in this experiment, uh, we'll be looking at two commonly used uh, distillation techniques by the name of simple distillation and fractional distillation. So what's distillation? So if you remember in our previous class, in our previous lab class, we talked about distillation. That was the method we use for purification of solids, whereas correspondingly, we use distillation to purify uh, contaminated liquid compounds. And the separation of liquid compounds is based on their relative boiling point. Uh, if you see at, uh, at the picture, that is the uh, uh, distillation at uh, an industry level, because in real life, you can find distillation experiments in beverage industry, as well as in petroleum industry. So from the crude oil, we get bending, we get uh, so many fuels, kerosene and and that of naphthalene, all these come from uh, a, a given single source, but because of their different boiling point, they, they are separated by means of distillation. So how is the distillation set up really assembled? Uh, so like I said in the beginning, we have two common distillation uh, methods, the simple distillation and the fractional distillation. And the one you're looking at the slide is for simple distillation and simple distillation have three major components, the round bottom flask along with the heat source, which we will be using it to boil the liquid mixture. And we have the condenser to condense the vapor coming out of the round bottom flask after boiling. And we must have also the container. Normally, uh, graduated cylinders are used as a container. So when assembling, the simple distillation looks like the picture you are looking at the right side of the slide. How does it work? So this simple distillation, as you can uh, imagine or guess from the name, is simple because it is not used to separate liquids that have close boiling points uh, because the the apparatus, the set, the experimental setup goes that goes in the way that you put the liquids, you start the heat, and the liquids start to boil, and they run all the way to the condenser, and you collect them in the container, so that if there are liquids with close boiling points. Possibly, you will find mixtures of these liquids, if uh, the, the mixture of these liquids for that matter. So, simple distillation is simply used for liquids that have very large boiling point difference, like that of methanol and water. Uh, you could see even with methanol and water, you have 35 degrees Celsius difference, which is which is acceptable, but simple distillation will still be effective if the boiling difference, boiling point difference is higher than that. So during the simple distillation, uh, you can uh, undergo simple distillation by taking your um, liquid mixtures in the round bottom flask and then you can connect the three-way adapter into the round bottom flask and then you connect the thermometer and then you connect the the condenser and your heating source most of the time for round bottom flask we use 
the heating mantle uh, which will also be uh, hanged on a, on a on a uh, on a ring to 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 support it uh, so when i sample it it will look like the one you're looking at the picture but of course the round bottom flask must be supported by one stand whereas the condenser should also be supported by by another stand And the second most effective distillation technique is the fractional distillation. They are the same in most of the parts. The only difference is in fractional distillation, we have an additional apparatus called fractionating column. And you can see with a blue color next to the round bottom flask. And for that, instead of three, the fractional distillation will have four major components. When assembled, again, in the same way with, with, uh, uh, with the fractionating column touching the round bottom flask first, the others will be connected in the same way we did for simple distillation. How does it work? So fraction, fractional column or fractional distillation is uh, is better method for separating mixtures with very close boiling point. In fact, even mixtures with a very large difference in boiling point, but if they are of equal amount, the best way is to use fractional distillation than, than simple distillation. So uh, what's the advantage of fractional distillation over simple distillation is that the fractionating column is made in such a way that its path has obstacles. The fractionating column I know is, uh, is, is a kind of condenser, but the path inside the condenser is made into circles, lots of circles. So what happens is when these two mixture of liquids boil and enter the fractionating column, they are forced to take some time within the fractionating column. With that, the more volatile compound will go fast through the obstacles, through the turnings, whereas the less volatile compound will slow down and take some time. So if you take if you, if you see at the numerical description of uh, what I'm saying, if you take uh, the methanol and ethanol mixture, for instance, at the beginning of the boiling, you will find 50-50 mixture of these alcohols. But when the, when the heating goes on, the more volatile solvent, the methanol, will go faster in the circulating path of the fractionating column, whereas the, the uh, ethanol will go slower. And the first drop you will get for, for, from the fractionating column for sure will be uh, uh, from that of methanol. So the laboratory procedure starts from assembling the apparatuses and to do so you have to have a clean and dry apparatuses, all of them, and then you need also to grease the three-way adapter to, to let her remove it very easily and also to prevent cracks while tightening it. And then you have to prepare your round bottom flask and the adapter itself and the thermometer and the heating sources as well as the transformer. And then you uh, clamp the, you just hang the heating mantle over the ring clamp 
and then you put the con the round bottom flask on the heating mantle and then you attach the three-way adapter and to it you attach the thermometer to attach the thermometer actually we used a, 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 a fork a fork uh, or a stopper uh, because the, 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 there are no glassware that adapt the thermometer and most of the time the stopper is used but if you have one in your laboratory you can also use that and, now, and then after that you can attach the condenser and make sure also the measuring cylinder is right below the mouth of the, the condenser and then you are done with the assembly. Uh, so, same thing here. When you um, when, once you assemble it, when you uh, once you assemble, once you know how to assemble, uh, the next thing is to to re to start the experiment and before you start the experiment you have to take the mixture of the samples and and for sure you will do that before you uh, completely assemble the the experiment and for this experiment you will be taking 10 ml of uh, methanol and 10 ml of water and two to three boiling chips into the round bottom flask and then connect all the parts of the setup the same way we explained in the previous slide and then you can connect the switch of the the, the sockets of the heating mantle to the transformer and then you start the, 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 the experiment And when you do this experiment, there are certain precautions you need to be careful. And the first one is you need to make sure that there is water flow in the in the in the condenser, and the condenser should all should should also be inclined so that the water the water goes from the bottom and uh, comes out from the top and then uh, it's good also to check whether the heating mantle is working actually um, heating mantle have sig signals when you turn them on they give red light somewhere in the in the apparatus but for some for some other reason they may they may not you can just uh, touch very nicely the the just touch the inside of the mental uh, it looks like uh, like uh, a wall or something and you can touch that and feel that it, it it's warming and uh, if it is warming then you can be sure that uh, the, the experiment is ready to go and it's also good to to check the connection of the the overall setup because if every setup is not connected very well for instance if the thermometer is not tightly uh, attached at the bottom of the the at the top of the the round bottom flask and I mean at the top of the adapter in case of simple distillation and yeah in case of fractional distillation also that you may have uh, vapor scapes which means you will not you will not uh, collect any distillation uh, during the experiment so it's good to check the connection and after you do that the next step is to look that the condenser the vapors are going all the way to the 
a three-way adapter and join and uh, and enter into the condenser and making droplets in the condenser and so uh, like I said before when you install sometimes we forgot to put the measuring cylinder right after the mouse of the condenser if you do if if you also forget to do that the liquid will be spilled over the table not into the measuring cylinder so uh, good to 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 mention that and you can also remember that when you do the experiment so uh, mostly what uh, during this experiment is I mean when we do them for research one is you collect one of the solvent is you can stop the the setup and this is and and then in the experiment because if you are sure I mean if one of the liquid is, is already evaporated and you got it collected the remaining liquid will be the other mixture and there is no point uh, just waiting for for it to boil and get collected again and this is because to because uh, it, it saves you time and it's also uh, uh, very clear that uh, if you collect one of the liquids, the, the, the remaining liquid will be uh, the other liquid. However, uh, because you as a student, you should uh, learn the experiment slowly and also appreciate the technique, uh, I may not recommend you to just uh, stop the experiment. You can carry on and once you collect the first volatile liquid, you can still carry on the experiment to collect the second coming liquid. And in doing so, you need to exchange to change your uh, container, the measuring cylinder, with another new one uh, so that you can collect the second coming liquid in a, in a different container. And after you do the experiment, you can uh, do the graph by uh, by collecting the data for each of the distillates in one milliliter interval and for the temperature. Uh, so if you begin with the distillate, the best way is to record the temperature for every one milliliter uh, collection of the distillate or sometimes we do also for every five degrees Celsius increase I mean that's not most of them effective so uh, better to go from the distillate for every one milliliter distillate you record the temperature and you 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 put your data into into the graph and finally waste management or the waste safety waste waste safety uh, is always to be in mind and uh, for this experiment we have solvent chemicals which will be waste at the end of the, the experiment once you separate the mixture of liquids there is no way to reuse them uh, that's not advisable and again, in case there are broken glasses like beakers or some uh, measuring cylinders or any broken glasses while you do the experiment, you should also take care of them. And then you need also to remember to turn off the heating mantle. You can first unplug the transform. The, you can first turn off the heating mantle and unplug the transformer. And that's all regarding this experiment. 
if you have any concern any question regarding the experiments i look forward to see your question or comments in the youtube channel and that's from my side thank you very much